Good evening on that call of Monday, April 3rd, 2023, regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board to order. Uh, with us tonight is Flo Smith on my left, um, Joe Staub on my far left, on my right is Tour Nelson and Dave Sawyer. With us also is Vince Connie, Town Administrator, Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? One addition, and that is for the acceptance of the fiscal year 22 audit as presented. <laughs> Diane will be covering that. Nothing else? No um, other additions. Uh, public comment? Hearing none, Senior Center request for funding decision. Okay, so this is a, a follow-up of four for the request, as you all are aware. Uh, in your package, you'll see a um, from the town clerk. Uh, one of the requests was for cost. There's, there's three different scenarios here uh, for the cost of holding that special town meeting. In addition, I don't think I put a copy of this in there, but there was also also a request um, about the, regarding the policy. So here is a copy of the policy. Uh, it, I did put it in there. Okay. Thank you. So that's in there for reference as well. Uh, the other thing that I have. There was also a discussion about finding out what Middlesex had done. This I know is not in there. I just received this late today. Um, Rachel was able to get a copy of the minutes from the Middlesex meeting uh, with regards to how they proceeded with that. And, and basically they're, they're looking at a, a similar method of having a special meeting um, and a town, a town vote to, to follow up on that special meeting for, for that. Uh, the other question that they they had raised was uh, they were looking into the idea of subsidizing the increased membership fees um, that Middlesex would incur in lieu of the appropriation funds that they were asking for. Um, don't know what the difference in the amount is at this time, uh, but if it is something the board is interested in, um, I thought there was going to be a representative here that we could ask, um, but there isn't. Um, uh, that's something that we can we can go back and look at at a later date and, and consider as well. What if there is a difference? Well, I mean, we can put that on the next agenda and give you time to find out. Right. So, should the board um, again? I've, I've worked with Rachel on this. Uh, should the board elect to go forward with this? Um, we'd like to have the warning out for the meeting by no later than the 17th of April. Um, and then between the 17th and the 24th, hold the public hearing and the special town meeting between the 17th and the 24th. And then the day after the special town meeting, have the vote here at the office um, for this. Uh, that would give us plenty of time, obviously, to get it done and in before the tax bills go out as well, to get those calculations in and get it revised. Um, so that would be the... Uh, the schedule of events should the board elect to move forward that we would recommend. <clears throat> what date were you looking at? Uh, warn, warn it on the, by the 17th of April, so two weeks roughly from today. Yeah. Within the next two weeks, warn the meeting. And then between the 17th and the 24th of May, hold the public hearing and the special town meeting. Um, after that with a vote on the day after whatever that day is that we have that special town meeting. You got you. So we can decide this on the meeting on the um, 17th and 17th? No <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's cutting it pretty tight. If we're going to warn it on the seventeenth, right. yeah. But what's the board's what's the board's uh, thoughts on this? Well, I guess the first question is: Are they? 
Are we going to ask for them for a petition or not? Well, if we're, if we're going to ask for a petition and they're not getting it, that's kind of a moot point. Yeah. So I guess the first thing is, do we want them to go through the petition route? Because if we do, I think we should communicate that to them so yeah. they can get working on that. Then I think the second question is, um, which of these uh, cost estimates, I mean, assuming we're going to make them pay for it, well, you can't Do see they, it should be on us. I don't, I agree. Exactly. So, um, that may figure into their decision if they want to pursue this option or not. Mm -hmm. so I think that's a very valid point. The recommendation from the clerk is not to use the tabulator. Um, right. Just for a, this single, yeah, and just do a hand count. So it's the, the, the hand count portion is the is the method that she's recommending. So it's a question of they get, uh, they get, uh, uh, if they pay for it out of the uh, 20,000, they get 70, they get 17. Right, right. Roughly. There, there is some room to discuss the hand count amongst the board members as well. Um, the question that, that, that the clerk had was, do we want to um, print and mail a postcard, because she has this in the cost now, uh, to every voter? And send it out to get the the best chance of turnout turnout for the votes on this because that's how that hand count uh, section was calculated. Well, I would think that the cost that she has there for the hand count, I think that's that's um, fair enough. Uh, <coughs> as far as tours. Uh, last one, um, I think they should go for the petition. I, I, I mean, I do too. But. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm in agreement with that. Uh, you know, based I believe on at the last <clears throat> meeting they mentioned that they were going to go ahead. They had a volunteer from the town. That's right. Um, that was willing to move forward with the petition. I believe they were going to. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't confirmed if they have started that with Rachel or not, but I believe that was their plan was to move with the petition as well. Mm -hmm. And I can certainly follow up on that and send a note out to the board members on the status of that. So if there was not going to be an increase of their what they're requesting, they don't necessarily need the petition, do they? They would pass the due date. They did go past the mm -hmm. due date. Mm -hmm. and I, I, okay. And I just, almost thought in discussion it was I would much we rather, were going to overlook that portion of it. I would, it sets a bad precedent. Okay. I, I would rather go the distance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts, the flow? I think in following up that you're going to do, Vince, also inquiring with them in terms of the uh, costs and what's been recommended and that from here, um, like you said, there was the recommendation for the hand count. Yep. And it is a little over $1,000 for the postcards to every voter. So out of the total 2889.04, a thousand forty seven sixty nine is is the postcards so um, I think reaching out to them having that discussion will help us in making a decision okay. I guess my next um, question would be what if they don't get a petition to us until the 18th well, I can't help but think they should be able to do that. I would think so. Mm -hmm, but, uh, mm -hmm. I would think they'd send in a request before the due date as well. Yeah. We're past that. Yeah. And you could include that when you follow up I with will. them, the urgency of, of yeah. responding with the petition as soon as possible and definitely well before the April 17th date. Um, and then there's also the possibility that if they pick up that cost, and it's not approved by the voters if we were to go forward with this process that they would be out the additional money. There's no guarantees that it'll be True. voted in by Correct. the residents of the election. And, and just again so the board's aware that bottom box in there is money that is still available in the election fund account according to the clerk. Okay. So 
we have some money there as well. If they go on this petition, is there any idea how many signatures they need to get? It's like five percent of the voter check. Like roughly a hundred ish. Yeah, I think it's like one hundred and three or one hundred and five, maybe. 10, I think, yeah. mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. like that. Definitely under one twenty-five, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. So it's the uh, oh, board's sorry, pleasure yeah. here. I'd say I think Vince's timeline is um, fine uh, to reach out mm -hmm. to the senior center that um, our expectations is a petition and we're looking at the hand count cost estimate we're, you know expect them to That's cover that. <coughs> And they're made aware that if it doesn't go, that they're incurring this extra, correct, this extra cost. Right. Is that payment up front? <laughs> <laughs> Only you would ask that, Tom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Vince will update us, so that'll yeah. be good. And okay, yeah, just send us an email, uh, not an email, but just text me. So uh, I just want to get this right. Um, email. Would, so if if they agree to the terms. Emails. We're okay to we're we're approving yeah. to move forward if they agree to the terms. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. And I just need to notify you that they've agreed to the terms and we can move forward and I can get Rachel moving on the yep. April seventeenth warning and all that stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they don't agree then we'll talk about it again on the seventeenth. Yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, multi use path update. So let me introduce Mr. Brent Rakowski. I hope I pronounced that oh, correctly. Good. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, from Otter Creek Engineering to, to give us an update on, uh, on where that stands and he'll share a screen so it'll be up on the screen as well. Yeah. So thank you. Um, as Vince mentioned, my name is Brent Rakowski. I'm with Otter Creek Engineering. Um, we have uh, been working with the town now for uh, much longer, I think, than Tom would like us to be working for the town. Um, we, are, uh, we are close to pushing a year now in terms of working on this project, about actively working on it. So um, understanding the board has uh, some time constraints, and I'm, I'll try to give you the, the, the 5,000 or 50,000 foot view of, of where we are at and, and, uh, and where things are going here. And, and Unfortunately, I think that my controls are behind that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so so the uh, the multi-use path uh, in the Newtown Center area uh, is is a VTrans funded uh, project. Uh, the, the funding for our our uh, scoping study has been uh, partially funded by VTrans. It's, I believe it's a 90-10 match, um, and as part of that funding comes along a number of different processes steps. So just quickly. Uh, in, in terms of where we were at and some of the deliverables that we needed to do, um, some, some, uh, an initial kickoff meeting with the town and some project stakeholders just to review the overall scope of, of the area that we were looking at studying. <clears throat> um, and then we moved into uh, the first of, of three public hearings to, to get, gather public input. And uh, the, the, the first initial one is, is the local concerns meeting, so that one ahead. And uh, we defined that helped define the project a bit more, and it also led to what's called a purpose and need statement. That purpose and need statement is a deliverable required uh, to be provided to VTrans as part of the funding, and, and to make sure that we're uh, we're following along with that program. So, uh, as as part of that local concerns and purpose and need was developed, uh, that again really defined the direction of the path. It, it moving forward. Um, from there we came up uh, with an alternative presentation in consultation with the town. We looked at different options uh, for a pathway uh, that, that circumnavigates, that cuts through the new town center, taking into consideration really all the, the, uh, the master planning efforts <coughs> and all the planning efforts that have gone into the, into the new town center to date. And um, with that in mind, uh, the, those alternatives were also geared to meet and comport with the, the purpose and need statement that was developed. <clears throat> From that alternatives presentation, we then put together a cost estimate and timeline. So uh, I do believe that the, 
this a, a final scoping study report was shared with the town. Uh, Tom has a copy of that. I'm, I, I'd be happy to share that with, with members if you like. Um, with that in mind, uh, right now we are at a stage where, following review with you folks uh, and everything seems to be okay, our next step um, as the consultant and the part of the deliverable or our requirement is to then submit that to VTrans for a final review. VTrans will review it, offer any comments, uh, critiques, uh, hopefully they're not many, um, but uh, that, that's, that, that we would expect some. So we're, right now we're at, we're at that stage, but wanted really to update, um, update the, the board on this and uh, make sure you folks were informed of where we were at in the process. So the so that was really the kind of overall process. Um, in your packet, there are excerpts. These are actually pages from the final report. Um, rather than create different things, they're just grabbing that that same information. Um, the the study area, if you will, and, and I apologize for the probably the size on the screen. Um, the the study area is identified in the red line. Um, the, the red boundary around the, uh, the what is quote unquote the town center area, and that's that's the area that we looked at really coming up with alternative alignments on. Um, also, uh, in regards to those alternative alignments, we looked at. Um, I'm just going to skip through here. This is this really this 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 slide here, where that next sheet just talks about more about the the public involvement component of that. Um, as part of the alternatives, we looked at a number of different things um, that are really set up by by VTrans, um, and those look at local regional issues, impacts to uh, natural resources, and historical and archaeological uh, impacts. So we looked at those. Then we looked at implications behind permitting, what types of permits might be required with the different alternatives. and. And then uh, we looked at really the engineering aspects of it. Is it, is it a challenging engineering uh, alignment, if you will? Uh, and then what goes into the construction of it? Uh, the types of materials, are there safety measures that we can put in place? And then everyone's favorite topic is cost. So that was part of, uh, part of these alternatives that we had put together. And just, just, I guess just to be clear, the alternatives portion of this was an entirely separate meeting that was held, uh, I want to say, back in August with the planning commission. August with the planning commission. Okay, so that that uh, since that time, um, there has been ongoing efforts at the the, the new town center that has has actually uh, led to a, a slight modification um, that shows up here in in Figure Four, which is a uh, prior alignment iteration. I will say. Uh, that's the try the term we tried to use to, to, to define that. There was a, it was a change, it was a deviation from what uh, was presented in the um, alternatives analysis, but it, it came as a result of ongoing efforts and development that's happening at the town center. Um, it's, it's a, the intent is that this is somewhat of a fluid document, understanding that, that as parts and pieces of the town center gets developed, there, there's going to there will ultimately need to be coordination with the prospective buyers, with, with uh, the, the reviewers, to understand and, and implement some of the goals or some of the scoping that, that's, that's been identified. So, um, in, 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 in just to, I guess, point out with this, this alternative iteration, um, as part of the scoping study, uh, I think the, I think, or our suggestion recommendation is, is the two things that really came out of that were wetlands, wetlands uh, impacts, previous wetlands impacts that, that were part of the, the mall development, and um, the challenges associated with really minimizing further impacts to wetlands, um, and maybe even correcting some of those historic impacts. So moving forward uh, with that in mind, uh, the intent is and the, the the process was really to try and document as best you can that you're minimizing or you're making reductions to to uh, to wetlands impacts and that goes really works in the town's favor moving forward um, Army Corps or the state wetlands people they all want to see efforts to minimize mm -hmm. that's that's mm -hmm. one of the, the key components so 
So this is, again, one of those efforts that, that were identified. Right, before you move off yes, of that, yeah. uh, that realignment had a, a, a reduction of the impact of the wetland buffer by about 9%. So that was a significant uh, improvement over where we were. So uh, I think the agencies, regulatory agencies, are going to look very favorably on that, on that realignment, and and uh, I think it's good. It's good for for the town of Berlin. Thanks. Thank you both. Um, and you know the the other aspect of this is the evaluation matrix. Again, this was this was part of the alternatives presentation. So really focused on, focused on. Um, it's somewhat of a visual in terms of uh, you know, what, what alignments may be better than the others. Uh, I will point out that the wetlands that you see in the evaluation matrix that's in your packet uh, does have uh, a, a few that are, uh, at least the, the wetlands, it is a uh, orange shade, a yellow shade, and a green shade. They all say yes to them. Uh, and I apologize for folks if, you, if there's any color uh, visual challenges, but um, the idea there is is that uh, they all have some level of wetlands impacts. One is more severe than the other. Um, and severity would be the orange, the yellow is not so bad, and the, the green is, is good. Um, so then uh, that was the evaluation matrix, and, and then uh, we looked at anticipated project costs. And at this stage, this is really a scoping study stage. It's very conceptual in nature. Um, but what we did do is, is utilize the path alignment, looking at different crossings, the type of material. This, this would be, uh, we were proposing a bituminous asphalt, so just an asphalt path. And, um, <clears throat> and, uh, and then we utilized uh, VTrans standard pricing from the last, actually it was pre-pandemic, um, but we put in uh, we put in an adjustment factor for that, and also carried a, a healthy contingency of 20%. So uh, as I'm sure folks are aware that, that there's pricing for construction materials for paving and asphalt have been all over the place. Um, I'm hoping, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that uh, those have somewhat stabilized and have become a bit, a bit more predictable, and and then I guess with that, uh, that's all I have for you. Unless you have questions, and again, I'd be happy to uh, follow up on any questions, provide some additional detail as needed, um, and I guess thank you for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to present for you. Thank you for being here. I had one question when you were explaining under sure. the engineering materials and safety. Yes. You said determining whether it was a challenging alignment. Yeah, was so it determined to be a challenging it, alignment? So, so it, uh, it, not so much the alignment, but whether or not um, there were, I, I probably, I, I'm sure I phrased that wrong um, or incorrectly, is that there are certain pathways where potentially a bridge may be necessary or um, some other type of specialized equipment might be needed. This this is not the case. Okay. okay. Thank you. The, the next step, as far as um, <coughs> my thought process is, is VTrans tends to be the, the uh, funding agency for these types of projects. Having a, an approved scoping study mm -hmm. makes you eligible for the next round of funding. It's, it, we were, we talked in house, Vince and I, we always thought this project would pro progress in segments, that you we probably wouldn't build it all at once, and we, we build it in segments. Um, the trans uh, doctrine doesn't really uh, allow that, because we have to do a final design, as, as Brent said, this is just, you know, this is uh, not a final design yet. Uh, so you have to do the final engineering, uh, and if, and there, there are VTrans monies for that, but if you, do the final engineering, then they require you to build it, uh, uh, whatever you design for. So uh, we're looking in-house now to get the final design monies outside of VTrans, and so then we can, once we get a final design, we could we could then build it in segments, the segments that we the town can afford, and without having to build the whole thing and incur all that debt at once. So that's the thought press process we're using on on the go forward. 
And in terms of moving forward with the trans, what do you anticipate would be the timeline of turnaround and decision, good, per se? Good question. So, um, it, it, it is, as Tom mentioned, it depends, it really, I think it's contingent upon a, a couple different things. One is really um, coordination with, with potential landowners and developers there, how that how that site is broken up, that may really drive which segment the town decides to proceed with first. And, and, and then, um, you know, I, I, I guess to answer your question, I, I, I think segment contingent is, you're looking probably at three to four years to go through the V-trans type process before you can get to construction. I think that's a reasonable time frame. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> uh, and, and I guess just as a frame of reference, and, and some of you may be aware of it, um, through that VTrans process, uh, there's very similar to the, the steps that I showed on the, I think the first slide, <clears throat> excuse me, there's, um, there are a number of similar steps in the design progression standpoint, and uh, one of those happens to be uh, what's called categorical exclusion, it's environmental review, that, uh, that is often not done in equity. That is often um, reviewed at VTrans, but then also sent out of state. And the timeline on that can be upwards of six months. Similarly, uh, when you get very close to uh, the design or, or the, the construction level drawings, you go through a right away process. And that is also um, six months plus, mm -hmm. depending on, um, depending on the number of properties that you have to get access to or right. temporary easements. So mm -hmm. um, that that's a year right there. Um, so that that chews up a lot of time. And then there's a number of different design steps, 30, 60, 90 on uh, design reviews. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions for Brent? Brent Dewey, does the board to move this V-trans, does the, does the board need a motion to approve it as is now to, to send it to V-trans? Will V-trans look for that? Or um, that my understanding is that V-trans does not need any action from okay. the town. I think you know it, 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 it obviously doesn't hurt with the understanding that this is you know that this is a I don't want to see final product, but we're anticipating another level of review from V-trans. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's where we go from here. If there's support for the document that we put together thus far, that's I think that would that would be helpful. So. More questions for Brett? Only other thing I was going to ask was about the wetlands. You yes. mentioned about the historical and coming up through the process. And what would you say? Where is that at in terms of where you are? With well, the I, I know that that. Uh, um, I personally haven't been involved in the conversations. I know that Tom has had has met out on site. Um, we have a natural resource ecologist. She has had conversations with the state. Uh, the the uh, program manager for VTrans is well aware that 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 there are some what you know there's there's wetlands out there right. and that there's there's um, historically there's been permits for wetlands impacts. So that is is a flag that just goes up in a file right. somewhere and somebody says, well, there's already been impacts. So. It, it, it undergoes a lot of a lot of scrutiny. What I will say, I know that that there's at least last year, I know three or four meetings that have already happened to talk about what the approach is and, and how to minimize those. And, and those are the first levels of really getting through the gate with those folks and just kind of gaining some consensus and, and approval from their end is what they want to see. The big the big thing from a wetlands, and, and I don't know if you know, but I think the big the the big the big decision point for wetlands permits, whether they move forward or not, is, is demonstration of avoidance, Minimum, minimization and avoidance. So mm -hmm. if you can demonstrate that you're doing that, then that, that all bode very well for you. So. Thank you. <coughs> Again, any questions for, more questions for Brett? <laughs> if not, thank you very much. Thank you we very much for your time. Thank here. you very much for your time. I really appreciate that. <coughs> thank you, Brett. Thank, Thank you for coming. And I don't mean you're going to do it, but I'm going to I'm going to head out. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have a long drive. So. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. Thank, Thank you. Thank Enjoy you. yours. <laughs> Safe travel. <laughs> Thank you, Tom, for all your efforts as well. Thank you, guys.
Have a good night. Okay, uh, Hilltop 60 day review update. So, yeah, this, this won't take long. Just uh, we had a, uh, the chief and I had our 60 day follow up with the, with the Hilltop in the state regarding on how things were progressing and so on. Um, nothing, nothing earth shattering really to report. You know, we've reached the agreement with the Hilltop. Funny enough, since uh, that agreement has uh, been reached, there has been a decrease in calls. Um, we know and understand why, and we're dealing with that with them as well uh, through the chief. Um, we right after we reached the agreement, they requested mm -hmm. to for us to consider allowing more rooms. Again, uh, we said no. Uh, we hadn't even been a week into it uh, when we had our weekly meeting with them. Uh, we said we, you know, we, we need to give this a couple of weeks to see how it goes before we do that. Um, so the following week, it's, uh, we did authorize them 10 more rooms. Um, and again, that was, uh, uh, the state worked with us on that as well. Uh, as far as applicants, the chief knowing, the hilltop and having discussions. Again, no significant increase uh, at that time. Uh, they have asked again, um, and we've said no again. For additional rooms to go up to the maximum amount. Uh, the other thing that came up, so that you're aware, if you hear anything about it, you should be aware, um, is last weekend uh, they had asked us to consider more rooms for a different program, which we weren't aware of. Nor was the, the town wasn't, the chief wasn't, none of us were aware of. Um, the state had asked them to start housing some immigrants uh, that had come in. And they were looking for housing. Uh, unfortunately, neither the chief or I got the request in time to respond over the weekend. Um, we did. The chief did actually uh, talk to them on Monday. Um, I actually talked to them as well on Monday um, to let them know that we weren't interested in increasing any more rooms at this time uh, for any additional programs as well. Um, so. They did have some come in over the weekend from the state. I believe they were Portuguese. Um, so our concern from the town, the chief, um, is the fact that without us knowing that in advance, there's no real good way, if there is an issue, to know what you're headed into to be able to respond. These people don't speak the language, they don't understand the language, so right out of the gate, a translator is needed. The chief has no way of, without the state providing some information, to have something like that readily available should an emergency arise, right? So that's, that's one of the major concerns um, now uh, with that, if they're looking at increasing that, that program here in town. Um, so we're going we're gonna to talk to the state uh, at our next Hilltop meeting next Wednesday, um, have some further discussions around that with them uh, how to mitigate some of these issues um, so that's that's the latest development over there um, we did have another meeting today in Montpelier um, with Barry Montpelier and ourselves uh, there with regards to the program the concerns around the program coming to an end some of these people are going to be displaced where are they going to go probably with the weather improving homeless encampments somewhere in Barry. Montpelier or Berlin. Um, we're kind of brainstorming together now. How do we manage that better and mitigate that as much as we possibly can? You know, are there going to be, for lack of a better term, some allowable encampments that maybe they're directed to in, in the three towns? Um, again, there's pros and cons and some risk with that as well. Uh, the state's predicting about 160 people will be coming off the program between uh, April and the 1st of June. Uh, so, or the 50, I think it's the 15th of April and the beginning or middle of June that they'll be coming off this program. They believe that about 40% of those uh, 160 will be relocating back to where they may have come from, which is out of, outside of Washington County. That still leaves about 90 individuals, roughly, to find some place to go. Now these aren't families, these are gonna be single. Most of them are single or couples, 
whatever. No, no families that we're aware of at this time. Again, that's the other issue. We don't have specifics from the state to know who, what, what are the services that these people need, what are their issues, right? Yeah. We, we don't know that at this time. So we're, we're actually talking, the three towns are talking about approaching the state saying, we, we need a better plan. And uh, we also want to talk about the Im immigration issue as well. Again, let's learn from our mistakes, not not repeat, you know, something similar again. So that's that's all going on as well now in the background. But that's that's my quick update um, as far as the hilltop goes. Um, the communication is there now. It's in place every week. Um, it's either the chief, me, or both of us there uh, meeting and talking with them, understanding what's going on. And together a little bit to manage that so if there's any questions yeah Vince I just so I understand this correctly since since this went into effect you you allowed them to increase by 10 rooms Correct. this new program was that above and beyond the 10 rooms that you allowed them to increase well uh, it looks like it didn't go above the allowance okay uh, but that was just Coincidental. Had okay. they had they filled the rooms with the voucher <coughs> program, it would have been above. But they hadn't well, but been they filled. Didn't do that they hadn't been filled at that time. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's why I was so, just curious because yeah. it sounded to me like maybe they had increased the ten rooms and they put this new program, and they had more rooms. Yeah, that's not, the way I not understood yet. it. Was it that, could okay. have happened, but it didn't. It didn't. Okay. Yeah. I was at the last meeting, but I won't be able to be at the upcoming Wednesday meeting. Yeah. So if well, anyone else on the This board is our regular meeting. Oh, anyway. the regular one. Yeah. Okay, very yeah. well. Which has uh, a state representative in it now. Excellent. Uh, Thank and, you. And the it's calls? The calls, calls have, been down. have been down. Is it because they've directed the, the desk not to call? Is that, do you feel that, or is it just that things have slowed down? The. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How can I say this politically correct? We believe that it is most likely due to the fact that they've said not to make as many calls uh, right now. That's that's, that's the word on the street that we have it. You kind of almost see that. Or I kind of thought that would be their status quo. Say yeah. don't call unless it's a major issue. It, exactly. That's what we believe at this time. Okay. Any other questions for Vince? So the, the calls that they are going on, are, are they are of a more serious nature. Something that they can't, they can't handle, handle or themselves. contain. Yeah, or contain themselves. And their allowance right now is, although they were allowed the 10, and they had asked for an additional 10, they are still within the maximum. They haven't received the... Correct. Yes, Correct. that's... So it, it's 10 shy of maximum. And they did ask for the extra 10, and we said no. Correct. And that extra 10 puts them at max? It, it will. They'll be at max. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thoughts? Okay. I guess, uh, yeah. So going to that second program um, with bringing in the immigrants, and I see this as being a very different program and, and probably unfortunate. And by the way, that was a family, I understand. Okay. You know, probably unfortunate to mix. But anyway, do they have programs there for the immigrants? They're, they're just housing them. That's all they're doing. Correct. Huh. Well, that ain't very okay. Again, and we're not even really aware of, of okay. any of that. Well, what they um, need, what their needs would be. Right. Anything. Mm -hmm. They're just. They're housing there. a family of immigrants there. Mm -hmm. They were. I don't, I'm not even sure that they're still there, uh, but I think if they were there for maybe five days. So at your next meeting, you'll be able to find out what Wednesday, we'll okay. find out what, what the status is um, and, and probably what the state has asked the Hilltop to consider or not. We'll find that out. Those are the questions we'll be asking on Wednesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, uh, treasure discussion and decision on moving to paycheck spender. So you have a proposal in your package that kind of details um, the homework that Diane has done on this. Okay, so just to make you aware, the reason I wanted to change, now, we've been with Paydata for 10 years, and we've been bought out by another company called Assure. The last two years, uh, because of COVID and because they didn't have sufficient 
workers, they lost a lot of workers, their service has become horrific. For two, year, two years ago, the board had approved that we could offer a pension program to our employees as payroll only, you know, payroll related only. I cannot get them to set it up. I can't. They won't set it up for me. They don't have anybody to help me. And there's other um, there's other codes that I use. We call them earnings and deduction codes. I've had them set up. They don't work correctly. So a lot of the work that I'm doing on payroll is manual. So if you look at like the payroll and you see I got that little yellow sticker in back, it's because I've done all these calculations and I've input the stuff manually. It's just not working. And the prices have gone up. And there's no one to service us unless what I have to do in order to get service, I can't just call somebody and say, hey, I need some help. No. You have to go through an email and then they have to review it. And then they'll get back to you. Sometimes. So, you know, if I do get to somebody, they're very helpful. But there's nobody assigned to us and I never get the second person twice. And a lot of the times people say, I can't help you. I need to put it to another level. And that other level never calls us. So all I'm saying is this is... It's just it's horrible. Okay. And I've been with Payday to actually be prior to this another uh, 20 years. I've been with them 30 years and I've never seen anything this bad. So anyways, we call this Paychex Company. And um, the price that they offer, the, fee, the fees that they're offering are very similar right now to what we're paying Paydata. Because Paydata brought the fees up. The only extra fee they have in here is what they call a one-time fee, implementation fee, to set us up for $500. Uh, which is, you know, which would be over budget. Uh, but we do have, in software support, we get $1,000. So if I could use five, you know, put $500 towards that, we definitely have the money to cover that. But all I'm saying is I'm thinking, that in talking to the paychecks, I think that they can offer us what we need. Um, and actually, Vince is very familiar with them because he's had paychecks in his past. And they can meet your coding yes. requirements and so That's That's ask, And they can handle all the different... Especially the police department rates. Yep. Uh, and that's what they're telling me, and I have no reason not to believe it because I'm sure that we're, um, where Vincent worked in the past, they had a lot of different pay codes as well. Oh, oh yeah. That, yeah, my experience with, with Paychex was, was good. I mean, they even have an app that employees can download on their phone and they can, they can see their checks, they can retrieve their tax information, all that uh, right, through the, right through the app as well. I'm just thinking that I would really like to move away from pay data and you know, work with paychecks. Any contractual penalties, changing? Not that I'm aware of, because we've been with uh, pay data for a very long time. So I will give them, you know, like a 30 day notice or something like that. And the only question I had was looking at the investment summary, the first year total. Mm -hmm. um, annual total was 3,077.76. Uh -huh. Um, but it's not all factored in up here. I wondered what the difference was of that figure, or I'm if there's thinking, another page. Uh, no, it's just that you have to look at the, like the 10876 times. Um, just oh, units. I see times yeah. the yeah. units. I didn't yeah. see that. Of Excellent. Yeah, Very because good. The, and the units are the employees. Right. So that's of course. where it could change. We get 30 employees. It's going to be more if they have less. Correct. Than less. Excellent. Okay. So Very I'm good. really thinking it's very comparable, with the exception of that one-time fee, to what we're paying right now. It might be even a little bit less. And using the funds that you said you had, there's no. That it would be no impact to us. And there are uh, two other towns that they know, so I don't want to name them, but the ones that I have a lot of faith in that did go from pay data to paychecks. Yeah. And I reached out to them, they haven't answered me yet. But, um, and can we make this chase choice without an RFP to other entities? Can we? I'm thinking that we probably, I know it's, well, it's under 5,000, so under we could. Yeah, and plus, there's yeah. not yeah. that many available. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get paid data and paychecks, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be some smaller ones, but. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a few smaller ones to local mm -hmm. banks and right. stuff, but nothing at this, right. this model. Yeah, I think over 5,000 asking are supposed to go out to uh, right. bid. Right, and this yeah. is, oh and this is under. Yeah. And basically, all you're doing is changing one service for another without any right. great financial I'd be willing to make the motion to give uh, Diane the authority to give them 30 days and change the paycheck here from the current contract. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you, Diane. Um, those stipulations about uh, 
you return calls. You're confident. Uh, you said you were you contacted two other municipalities about uh, how they like paycheck. They haven't called me back yet, but I'm not you know anticipating any sort of issues. I mean, these are I'm not going to name them because I think it's yeah. rude to name them. But these are ones that I have full faith in. Okay. If they went to paychecks, well, that's that's telling me anything I need to know. I'd like to just simply amend that motion to that as long as there's no contractual <laughs> penalty okay. impacts. What? I have more, or I mean, is there enough for everybody? I could just have some. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I'll find out for sure, and then if there are none, then we can move on. Who seconded his motion? I did. You have a care with that? Yeah, you are there. Okay, um, any other discussion on this? No. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, treasurer's update. Okay. Do you, have, do you have a pamphlet in your package as well that Diane's going to talk to on that? Ledger, which I've also sent to you, but I think it's just a easy to look at it here. So what I've done is I've gone through, we're almost to the end of the, well, we are at the end of the third quarter that ended last Friday. So I'm just looking to see where we stand, and I think that we're in pretty good shape. You know, not knowing what spring is going to bring, obviously, you just don't know that piece. But I think the winter was, you know, was not as harsh as it could have been. So I think there were probably some savings there. So in going over the income items, I think that um, some of them are slightly up, which is good. Um, we've received more from money from the state for the highways. Um, but as far as licenses and fees, I'm thinking that that's. I, I'm hoping. I'm pretty sure that we would be probably right on the money, right on the money, or maybe a little bit above. Uh, the town clerk has actually made a little bit more than I was expecting. So I think that we're in good shape there. Um, interest, actually, that we're going, I'm going down the page, um, we made more money because the bank now is paying more interest than money we have in the bank. Significantly more. So that is, you know, very good uh, something that happened. Uh, in assets, we did sell two of the vehicles, the police vehicles, so we're kind of there. Um, the police, I'm not anticipating anything there. And now going into the expenses. Okay, so as far as the budget and uh, the administration, um, right now you're seeing that the assistant treasurer's pay is in there. That's going to be paid through ARPA. But I'm only I'm going to do that at the end of the year as one entry. Okay, so that will come out of there at the end of the year. But you know to do it every pay period would just be crazy. I think and that will come out. And as well as for pay. Uh, the things that are you know, go along with the pay, the pension, uh, the health insurance, all the things that go along with the pay are all coming out. But I'm only going to do it one time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think that we're going to be pretty much on target. Otherwise, um, I think we're probably a little over overtime again, um, more with Tom than me on that one. And I think that we've been keeping track of Tom's pay so that some of the other departments can pay for the payroll, uh, such as Planning Commission and DRB that appears to be moving. That the overtime is going to. Um, and then just to the records restoration, that one's way over budget. That's one book basically that was taken care of. That doesn't happen all that often where you have that huge amount for one book, but we can't anticipate things like that will be happening in the future too. These books are getting older in the vault, and it's, the fee is extraordinary too. Well, when the when when the uh, when the records all go on to the digital, correct. The, the maintenance on those books should go down. Absolutely, they'll all be digitized. Well, the thing is, they won't be worn out so much. Right now, we're taking books that are really worn, mm. and those are the ones being replaced. Still, so I would imagine they last a lot longer. Maybe they should be replaced, but they could probably go another ten years or something like that. That's digitized. So I just I did want to point that one. Uh, the other thing in the assessing department. That is going to probably be a little over budget, and that has to do with them moving into the trailer and has to, having to buy supplies for the trailer, like desks and a printer, um, so they'd have the equipment they need in order to operate. That's one time. I don't anticipate that being every year. It's just this year we had to give them the equipment they needed, so that's going to be under budget. Uh, meetings and elections, I think that's going to be under budget. Uh, the insurances, that will be over budget. I believe just because, um, well, number one, I told you that Cali's, you know, that will go through ARPA. However, um, Chelsea is on the, um, 
there's also on the insurance that we have, hers was two person, or the person that worked before her, which is single. And I, so when I do the budget, I'm always going by the, you know, what we have mm -hmm. in the office at that time and what their, you know, what plan they're on. Okay, so that one's hard to calculate in another way. So that is going to be higher. Uh, let's see, the zoning. That has no expenses yet. Um, DRB, I'm not anticipating that being any issue. The Planning Commission, if you look at that right now and you say the actual is 103000 is that's going to change. That is all the fees right now for the bike path and Fisher Road diet. And once I'm reimbursed for that, then that will come out of there. Okay, or we'll have, um, we will have an income item. I do believe that the total that will be coming out of pocket from the Planning Commission on those two projects, I think it's like $23,000 is left, that will come out of the Planning Commission. Okay, when everything is said and done. And this the person that was speaking about tonight, the bike path, he's saying that sounds like it's pretty much done. So I'm really hoping that Fisher Road um, and the bike path will be done by June 30th so I can try to get this money back and then just have it all clean for the so that's why that one is over. Um, other boards and commissions, I think we're in good shape there. Cemeteries, that'll probably be right on. We'll start um, mowing again in May. Uh, taxes and assessments, I think we're probably okay on that. Town offices, that is gonna go over, I'm sure of it, and it is right now. Uh, the new server setup, if you look at the software support and IT, that new software, when we set up the new server, it took a while to set it all up. I mean, some of it was in FY22, but a lot of it was in FY23. We also got new laptops, and I think the laptops are paid through ARPA, but as far as the configurations and all the other work with, with, with laptops that's in there. And then um, the mowing is, I was looking at the maintenance, and the mowing was higher than anticipated. Uh, we put that out to bid last year, and that was more than I anticipated it would be. Did that was it like a two year or three year contract? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, general expenses, I'm thinking that's probably well, that's probably going to be a little bit over. Uh, I was anticipating we'd have twenty thousand dollars for CPA services and audit, and then when it went to bid last year, we only had one bidder, and that bidder was twenty eight thousand um, from Self and Empowers, and so we are going to be over budget on that. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So at, at one point, I think we were talking about, you know, some cleanups and maintenance here at the building. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be for next fiscal year that we're talking about spending any kind of money on the interior of the building? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll be talking about buildings and, and things in the, in the very near future in some meetings. Okay. Once we get some information back from mm -hmm. the and Economic Development Committee, quite, quite honestly, I, I, I want to hold off until we have a better idea of where we're going to go mm -hmm. uh, before we decide to do anything here. From a maintenance perspective, very heavy in this building. Okay. Until we know what we're going to do. Okay. Uh, police services, I'm quite certain that it was going to go over. Uh, being uh, going to the National Guards for a month. We have, we have one that's going to be gone for a month for military training. Uh, I think it's in May. Yeah. Uh, we have one. Uh, just talking to the chief today, yeah. uh, that's going to be gone for a couple of weeks in June, and another one in either the June or July time frame that'll be out as well for uh, so two, two to three weeks. So once again, that will probably Even though we're fully staffed, we'll have people working overtime to cover those shifts some. And we do have a part-time person yeah. that's covering some. Well, at least we're fully staffed there <laughs> yeah. compared yeah, to what we were. Uh, yeah, and we're a lot better than, uh, than what, yeah. most everybody else in the state, yeah. quite frankly. And we'll have some reimbursement from the Hilltop, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, some yeah. for some of that, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, and I think that there are some expenses for the vehicles. I mean, just maintaining the vehicles is costing more and more all the time. And you know, we've had great jobs, and we've had a lot of work done to our vehicles, just, just regular, you know, where I can work, but if there's a lot more of it because the cars are getting older, our fleet is getting older. Um, and then as far as highways, I think that we're really good shape of the highways. And, you know, I'm anticipating we will obviously we'll have more payroll for summer roads because that's coming right up. Um, and I 
think that maybe we'll have um, we'll have call rides. You know, I just think that we're I think we'll still be under in them, but that depends on once again mud season. So if it stays the way it is right now, we'll be fine. Uh, the winter roads, I think that we were good on that. Um, by the way, we will be adding sixty-one thousand dollars to set the, uh, the salt bill. You just I finally received the billing from Cargill, and we paid that today, and that was sixty-one thousand dollars. So that's going to go into this category. So that's going to be bringing up how much we spent for winter. Mm -hmm. They we finally got them to send us some bills. So. Yeah, and that should catch us up. We should be under on that overall. Yeah. I no, think that, we're that not, I don't think we're expecting any more uh, salt, salt bills on that, so we should be good. It'll actually be under budget. Yeah, I think he even thinks he'll have a small inventory of it too. But you want to ask how much is out in the shed? Yeah, I don't know how much is out in the shed, but I know that he was anticipating having some left over, and also he's having he was anticipating at this point having some left over as far as the um, the gravel. Too. So, what's the practice with the salt? Do you try to not have inventory? Yeah. It's not like you fill your shed up at the end of the no. season. No. no. Okay. Exactly. It, it, it all depends, right, on the weather. Yeah. We, you know, we base it, since I've been here, we usually base it on the year before mm -hmm. and, and kind of try to forecast it that way. If we don't have a lot of ice, we have some left over. If we have a lot, we're going to be close, right? Mm -hmm. So the one thing we wanted, we, we probably overestimate a little bit because the one thing we, we don't want to run out of no, salt no, and sand no. in the winter. That won't be good for any of us or our phone system. <laughs> okay, so now so. I'm on page six, Highway General. We still think that we're, you know, we just don't see that going over. And Highway Other, I don't anticipate that going over either. So. Uh, capital budget. Highway and structures, highway equipment and structures, that's mostly grants to be reimbursed at this point in time. I don't think I'll get reimbursed this year, but you know, we'll keep it over until next year. And then the police equipment uh, was a pick, police pickup. And otherwise than that, that's bringing you up to speed on that. And I'll be sending reports each month. Did anybody have any questions on this? Well done. Thank you. I like that you're going to send them monthly, and yeah, yeah. this is Sorry. a lot yeah. of work, and you kind of break down. <coughs> I do want to get back to where we were on the board before, but the the audit just took up so much of my time that I just focused just on you know four twenty mm -hmm. nine months. And speaking of the audit, yes. Okay, so I did send you the uh, finalized audit. Uh, and I didn't add it in here because it was a lot of paper, and I, I'd already discussed it, which agreed. Uh, we answered the findings, um, and I mean, I don't think there was anything out of the ordinary because, like I said, I talked about it before. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking for you to just say, you know, you're okay with it. And if you've got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. So you're ready for? FY23. No, uh, I'm not that optimistic yet. No. <laughs> You're good with us accepting it then at this point? Yes. Like I said, oh, yes, very much. Set, after the discussion we had, yes. or emails we had. Okay. Yep. And like I said, if you have any questions on the findings, we have talked about the findings at quite a few different meetings. So I don't think they were, none of them were all that significant. The one that was significant had to do with an entry I made the past year, which Father Gil and Segali accepted. Was that addressed in the response? Mm -hmm. yes. the, the father who had accepted it? Yes. Okay. I don't think I put that. It was the error of them. I just said that, you know, well, we, sub we, don't we submitted it. the answers and they yes, accepted we did. them. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, we did. Our, all our answers. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> um, I move that we accept the FY22 audit as presented. As presented. I second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, now, looking forward, I don't know how the statement of work was worded, you know, on this uh, bid process. Um, what are the chances of getting this timeline moved up 
for FY23 as far as you know, the, the audit being able to put into the town report? Mm -hmm. but, but there is just one issue, and I, that was in one of the findings too with Montpelier. I have to get the true report from them. Now, in the past, I get the TRIP report in like July or August of the next fiscal year. But Sullivan Power said, no, we can't close this audit until we have it. I can't make Mount Pillar give that to me in December because yeah. they're not going to have it, I don't think. Mm -hmm. So I just don't know. I mean, otherwise than that, I think I'd have all the other information together. And I pretty much did. Mm -hmm. We've been waiting mostly for this one piece. And I can't make it happen. So I don't know. Because our previous auditor didn't have any problem with that. Correct. And, yeah, and, we, and, we put that, and we put that in the statement of work, that we would have a draft by December. December yes. And the final, yeah, there were two, to be there, printed in the town yeah, report. There, there were two things at play here. One was the new auditors, the new and that takes, And that takes, I understand they've got to get used the to it. The second thing was stuff. why we got it so late from Montpelier. <coughs> I, I had a conversation with Bill Frazier on that. Um, and. He, he apologized because he knew uh, when he looked into it that they were having staffing issues. The person that did it was no longer with them. There was not a good turnover on their side. So the people coming in were scrambling to figure out how to pull this all together. For not only that they were late because of it as well um, as impacting us. So there, there was some, as Diane said, there was a, a huge amount of delay created on that side of it as well for those reasons. I mean no fault of their own. It's not like they were, you know, blowing us off because we were Berlin. They didn't have the resources to do it mm -hmm. in a timely manner. So, And I understand CPA firms are short-staffed as well, Absolutely. just like everybody else. Right. Absolutely. Well, that's why we only have two spots. And we didn't have to have a, a single audit, thank goodness. And I don't think we will in that one twenty three either. So that's good news for us because that takes even more time. And then we can get the audit published on the website. It is on the website. It is on the website. Yeah. Now. Okay, cool. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Once, as soon as it comes in, we'll, we'll get it out there. It's cool. it, no, it's already there. Yeah, it's there. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant twenty-three dash twenty. For payroll from March 12th to March 25th, 2023, paid on March 29th of this year in the amount of $65,478.20. Also payable warrant 23G18 with checks 22832 to 22868 for payables in the amount of $460,343.43 and payable warrant for Fisher Road culvert payment to Vita in the amount of $20,518.02 to be paid on April 18th of 2023 through the bank ACH. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, okay, approval of February 21st, 2023 minutes. We'll do these individually, I think. I make the motion to approve the regular select board meeting of Tuesday, February 21, 2023, with minor adjustments, um, one of which is including the last name for Raylene, Raylene Lumiere, um, changing another last name, and just minor edits. And I'll share those with um, Vince. Right. Also on the last page, putting in Chief's last name, Chief Pompey. I'd second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Aye. Okay. And uh, minutes for March 6, 2023. I make the motion to approve the regular select board minutes of Monday, March 6, 2023, as presented. Second. So any discussion? Mr. Chair, I think there's going to be an issue with the quorum for that meeting as the only three members present were yourself, Flo, and Mr. Parton, and I can't. who is no longer on the board. So they're... Yeah, I can't suck at that. I wasn't here. Mm. 
I don't know how we fix that. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not well, sure, a, but I, I don't think. I don't know how they do it, um, but DRB, it would not matter if you're here or not when they approve the minutes. <laughs> well, I know it's a different practice from, from what we do on the select board, but. Mm. Good question. <laughs> Uh, I, can, I can look into it, and I can come back with an answer the next meeting. Yeah, I almost think I almost think we'll have the, I think the board can just can uh, approve them as they're written. Um, I I think so, but again, I'm not positive on that. I can look into it. Yeah, we can postpone this till next meeting. That's for the six March, correct? Yep. And then for the minutes for. Uh, you have a motion to table for the next meeting. Yeah. Can I do that? Sure. Okay. I do that. We have a second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, for minutes for March 20th, 2023. Um, I do have one. Correction under your organization of the board. I nominated Brad for the 2023 2024 uh, term. Other than that, I make the motion to approve. Your second. let someone else second only because I didn't get a chance to read them yeah. thoroughly. I wasn't here. And neither was, well, remotely. <laughs> I think I signed in, but I didn't have enough Wi-Fi and get kicked out <laughs> pretty quick. So. You, you were in and you were out. In and out fairly quickly. Yep. I make the motion to table we can table this one, table this one okay. until the next. That gives us all time to read it thoroughly. Okay. Is that a second, Joe? Second. Thank all those in favor, table? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see here. Here are my favorite part. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, round table, Joe? Um, yeah, just wanted to share an event that happened last Sunday about 7.30 in the morning. There was a um, car accident up on Interstate 89 about 7.30 in the morning. The first, respond, first responder was our Corporal Road. This, uh, the vehicle left the northbound lane, rolled over several times. The driver was ejected and landed in the southbound lane. He was the first one there, shutting the interstate down, and uh, did a great job in just, I guess, um, keeping the individual calm while the rest of the responders were coming in. Talking to EMS, um, this was a real tough one. And so EMS was there, uh, Berlin Fire was there. We had 10 people and everybody had a job. And it was stressful for everybody. Corporal Roden was there all alone for moments. That guy needs to be commended. Um, so, just I think we ought to thank the PD yeah, and Corporal Roden. Absolutely. Pass on to the chief our appreciation for him. Most definitely. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that with us, Joe. Yeah. Hello? Uh, nothing tonight. Thank you. Nothing, sir. I just got a question on licenses and stuff. I've seen something today that kind of caught my eye. Uh, uh, these convenience stores, when they've got the uh, beer and wine and tobacco licenses, like, I, I realize the Welcome Center has a liquor license because they sell liquor up there. So that's a different type of license, right? If they're selling smaller bottles, it's still 
like say like the McGillicuddy's and the Fireball, they still have to ha have that same liquor license, right? I'm not sure that, but I would think so. Well, they have to have. Uh, it's a, I think if you're in retail, it's still a class two, but um, you have to have a different liquor license to sell true uh, liquor to to sell liquor. distilled spirits. Yeah, right. I went into a place today, and I happened to see that they had a display up at the counter with Fireball and Dr. Milk, Gillicuddy and all that, but no other liquors, and I kind of like scratched my head and I said, this doesn't seem right. That it was in Berlin? Uh, the Jollies down at uh, bottom Gallison Hill, that's still Berlin right there. In front of Casella's, right? Know, that's my place. Montpelier. 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 Okay. It's Montpelier. Right. Yeah. The river's the Well, border. even then, even then, it's it, that's a different type of liquor license. It's yeah. not just a beer and wine yeah. thing. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, not to stir anything up, but I just, <laughs> I'm sure it did, but it just kind of caught me off guard because it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. No, that's not, that was my question. Now I stirred the pot. You actually have a, you have a lot of communities in Massachusetts who are um, well, they're not allowing that to happen only because they're, they're one they're not recyclable, the plastic containers are not recyclable, and, and they're just finding it all they're scattered around the towns. Yeah, just so thrown out. Yeah. Well, just surprising. I can see the beer and wine, but that hard liquor. I just uh, I had to take a step back. I said I hadn't seen that. In, I've seen it in other states, but not yeah. in Vermont. Vince, anything to add? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've got a few things that I think the, I just want to brief status and thoughts and things for the board. Just a few things this time. <laughs> First, on the liquor licenses, again, as the board gave authority for approval to the clerk, um, since the last, last meeting and last report, there have been two more that have come in and been approved so that the board's aware. Um, first and third class at Applebee's, and the uh, second class at Dollar General We're, have both been approved. Just again, that's just information so the board's aware. She is on it, taking care of it. So quickly for the round table, I'll, I'll try to be quick on most of it. Um, the first thing that you probably see is a Chittenden County uh, Regional Planning Commission letter. Um, this goes back to January when we were talking about the transient, transit oriented development plan for the Northwest Vermont where Central Vermont is included. So Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and the um, Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission are active in this together. Uh, the board agreed that we should look into it and apply. We did. It looks like we're going to be receiving up to $100,000 are going to be made available for that grant that they're getting for the consultants to create a transit oriented development master plan um, with uh, municipal bylaws and development regulations to implement that plan um, that we're going to participate in. It'll most likely be administered uh, through the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission uh, for us. Um, but it's, it's a good good thing, right? Um, there is some additional information I believe I put in your package uh, just as a memory jogger. Uh, the letter that we sent and some of the information that we sent uh, with that letter to get us involved and the email that came in from Central Vermont asking us if we were interested and what was involved. Um, so that's all in there just for your reading pleasure at your leisure. Uh, but the good news is it looks like we're uh, eligible for to participate and up to $100,000 of grant towards that planning portion of that. So I think that's that's good good news for us. Um, the second thing, I hope they're in the same order. I don't know if they are. You may have a little map like this in your package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is just for thought, um, um, for discussion, debate uh, at a later time. Um, but Tom and I were, were talking, you know, how do, we, how do we find property in Berlin to get the grand list up, maybe put some housing or some other things. This 
piece of property belongs to the town that runs along the Dog River in Riverton behind the fire station. Uh, you'll see in there an indicated area of about 7.1 acres in the bottom right portion of it. So, you know, just thinking out of the box, we could fit um, on that property roughly between 20 and 35 housing units within our zoning regulations there now. If we wanted to develop that 7.1 acre parcel. The next question is, how do you get to it? There's two possibilities. There's a bridge coming out of Riverton that the state wants to keep and relocate to a town somewhere. That bridge would be perfect to put off of Route 12 where that circle is to have access um, directly to that property. If they reconstruct that bridge like they're talking about and they can relocate it just down the road, maybe we can work a deal with the state um, to keep it affordable to do that. Because putting a bridge there, we don't have to worry about any right-of-ways over the railroad tracks, right? And dealing with the railroad coming off the other side, which would be over on Chandler Road. However, through a little bit of deed searching that I did, um, it looks like there is an existing 25-foot wide right-of-way to that property off of Chandler Road, where Chandler Road and West Hill intersect. That gully right there where the, the brook runs through, according to the way the weeds, the deed is worded, there's a 20 foot, 25 foot right of way alongside the brook down to that property. I haven't physically looked at it yet, but there's a Haskins Road extension that's been built and a couple of houses down in there. They may or may not be in the right of way. I don't know yet. It's gonna take some exploring to see, but that that right away you're talking about goes right through Lyons sand pit down here besides the white property. Uh, I think it's after Lyons pit. It may be yeah. a portion of it. I believe it's after the pit. Is yeah. it really? Yeah. But that's another thing. I'm sure if you talk with Lyons, you can get that right away. That property. Uh, that's within the that's within the railroads right away. Most of that is It'd it be, really? Yeah. Right It'd through be, here. And my understanding is they've already said no about getting any access. Right. along there right away okay. uh, down through there. Uh, I've got to do a little bit more legwork, but two possibilities exist, right? The, the bridge is a great one. The state's looking for a place to put it. It would be awful cheap just to remove it and reconstruct it just a mile or two down the road to give access to that property. The other thing that that property might have value for, since you brought up the pit, is for mining for gravel and sand. We may want to do some core samples to see um, but obviously the first choice in my mind would be housing. There's a need for it. If we could put in housing, bring up our grand list by four or five million dollars on that on that property, um, with well, access mean, right off of Route 12, right? You got a hospital that would be interested in housing there. Yeah. You got Norwich that would probably be interested in housing there. Um, and and somebody else had to had a good idea about possibly put a parking lot in right down there. For access to the swimming hole that everybody likes so much for recreation. <laughs> Again. Thing is, is that that to develop that it wouldn't be that hard if you did have access because I think most would be in ground septics over there because it is all good gravel. It's all good gravel. It is good all things. good gravel. So, so that's that's you know more to come on that. It's something to think about. If you have any questions or comments? You know, let, let me know something I need to look at. If you have thoughts on? Send it to me. We can we can look at it. Um, so that it's right an opportunity, I think it's an opportunity for the town. <coughs> We're about to and we save another right away. historical bridge. And they'll be right next to each other. Is that? Okay. That was my impression. <laughs> you need. Dave? No, I was just wondering where that right away he was talking. About. He thought maybe. The are those yellow right -of markings marked? are those. The right of ways are marked. I I don't know. I haven't been physically okay. able to look. Well, no, I'm I'm looking I, on your map. Oh no, it's not. There. It's not mapped on the map. Right away. Whereabouts, would that, whereabouts would it be? Right here. There's the wording for the right away. Just so happens I have a copy of the deed. Okay. No. Whereabouts on here are you, you seeing that? Okay, where does the uh, channel? Yeah, I don't see the West Hill though. No. It's way over here. Yeah. It's down West Hill's pretty up here. <clears throat> West Hill is somewhere down in here. It's down there's, 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 yeah, there's. And then the somewhere down in goes here. back. Oh, so you're thinking it accesses from here? Somewhere right in here, I believe. Oh, okay. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's 20 foot wide and it comes from Chandler. To uh, right away, 
<clears throat> by the, by the brook which flows here, off of West Hill right there. into the Dog River. It used to be. So, um, you know where so the gully is right there at West yeah, Hill? Yeah, because this is. That's where it is. That's where that right away would be. It's right down here. Yeah. Where's so. the jacuzzi? <clears throat> okay. Right so that's further right down. Now. Yeah. I printed that before oh, I found this. Yeah. So, oh. it's going to be so at Chandler mm -hmm. and Pine Hill. It's going to be down this way. Uh, Here's Gordon Drive, so Pine Hill's up yeah, there. A little further down. Yeah, okay. and it's down towards the end down there. Down, I would say it's like right, yeah. right here. Because you come down so Pine Hill, Vince, and you literally yes, sir. You'd have to look at it. Go down, you can't mess up. What, what the town would say is that they developed a pit there yep. compared to what the town would receive if we put in housing yeah. going forward. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. But to me, the the housing is in perpetuity, right? Yeah. The pit's going to run out at some point in time. Yeah. What we would say from having a pit versus you, housing. You got to have housing right now. Housing in this area, Berlin, Montpelier, and again, the, 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 the roof. You know, we can probably get a good deal with the bridge. <laughs> you know, the timing is is right. The, yeah. The, you, rather than fighting with the railroad. Um, but it looks like we may already have it. We need to confirm that. Um, and the property, other than that, is really almost inaccessible, right? Uh, from at that point, so we have a, may have an opportunity. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> More to come on that. And again, if you have any thoughts or ideas, send them to me and we'll look into it. Uh, the other thing, just want to make you aware of, the radio systems are in. The highway is very happy. The police aren't quite there yet. There's been some issues there that they're working out. If you hear anything, um, I've talked to Burlington Communications today on that. Um, first of all, um, we're going to be asking for, uh, well, the police are asking for five additional microphones for their mobile phones. They did not come with those. They weren't in the quote. It's going to be about uh, a little over $1,000. So I, I'm, I'm authorized up to $5,000, but I'm just informing you of that. Um, the, the issue that they may be having with the radios <clears throat> Burlington Communications is looking into this. The, the problem exists, from what I understand, only when they're trying to talk with the state police. So that's kind of important, really. Um, <clears throat> but they believe, Burlington Communications believes at this point, they're going to do some more testing. They believe it's on the state police side. They've had a lot of problems since they've had to convert over to the digital. They've had a lot of problems with their radios. So they believe it's on that side. Um, in fact, the state police are looking to do what we just did which is get a repeater up on, on West Hill, I mean, uh, Irish Hill, Irish Hill, to help that out. Um, so we don't know, but they're working on it if you do hear anything. Um, other than that, <clears throat> the radios, like I said, for the highway crew are working. They've got complete coverage in town now, <clears throat> unlike what they had before with the dead spots. So they're pleased. Yeah, they're very happy with them. And most of the police are, other than this one issue now, but once we get that resolved, they're probably going to be pretty happy with it as well, because they'll be on the tower. Um, I'll just pass this around. Uh, this is just an abutters notice um, for the Benoits up on Airport Road. They want to put in a, uh, uh, a special name for the barn. Monitor. Monitor barn. Can't ever. Um, just to make you aware, um, I think you got a map there. You did have the it in the packet. Is. I had the notice in there. You well. did. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I knew I had the map. But, um, so that's to make you aware that that's going on. Um, up there. I don't think it's going to have much of an impact. I'm not sure how close it is to the property line. Um, again, the other item to make you aware, it was approved in the budget for the police to purchase another cruiser. We've, we've got the, the quote for that. I think, I think, we, did we approve 45 or 50 in the budget? FY24? Uh, yeah, no, this is the 23 one, I believe. I think that was only 45. I have to look at the minutes. Okay. It's not in the um, but the cost, Actually, they, they since the last quote they gave us, it dropped with these folks for by a thousand dollars, but it's still fifty two thousand three hundred and fifty eight dollars. Um, that uh, that they'll be moving forward with on that, um, and it's actually I know the last time we talked, he was talking about looking at uh, different vendors, but this vendor, uh, this uh, colonial. Municipal group actually does have the vehicle available. Um, he can have it in in, about, in a couple of months rather than six or eight months like like the others, as well. 
Uh, so they'll be will be moving forward um, with that new cruiser for the police as well. And the last thing that I have, believe it or not, I do have a last item. Uh, there was a question about the uh, COTS system and the funds. And I believe that you'll have this document in there which explains uh, the fees uh, for the funds, the subscription fees, uh, you know, it's a dollar per page for daily monthly subscriptions for the image print, a dollar per page for annuals dispersed to the customer, and one dollar per page for annuals dispersed to COT. So we get a dollar a page, and they get a dollar a page for the annuals. So that, that's in there for information to answer that question that you had asked. And I will be quiet now unless you have any questions on any of this for me. Anything else for Vince? No executive session? No executive session. <laughs> Next agenda item is to Adjourn. I, I entertain a motion to adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.